I challenge you to deny it was you. We have not overlooked the fact that the appellant's alleged statements did not in every respect tally with the scientific evidence as to where the bombs must have been planted. The fact that the admissions do not in all respects tally is perhaps a reason for doubting whether they were concocted by the police. All one can say of Mrs. Linus's evidence is that on one or other of the occasions when she gave evidence before this court, she committed perjury. Ian, stand there, please. Her reasons for changing her mind were not acceptable. There was nothing in the remark, don't forget, we all have families, which constituted a threat. She demonstrated herself to be a witness who was not worthy of belief. Yes, Sandra, it, it's in. It's bad news, I'm sorry. Mr. Clark was a most unconvincing witness. He's also an embittered man. We have no doubt that the evidence given to us by Thomas Clark suggested that his erstwhile colleagues in the West Midlands police force treated these appellants with brutality was false. With no disrespect to Mr. Reed, whatever else might be said about him, he was quite clearly not a person who would have been capable of organizing or carrying through such a huge and complicated conspiracy. Indeed, we doubt whether it was a scheme which was capable of being engineered by anybody. As has happened before in references by the Home Secretary to this court, under Section 17 of the Criminal Appeal Act 1968, the longer this hearing has gone on, the more convinced this court has become that the verdict of the jury was correct. We have no doubt that these convictions were both safe and satisfactory. The appeals are dismissed. one or two people remain in jail rather than risk the credibility of the legal system by having to own up to a mistake. Give us the name. Rubbish. Rubbish. Can't Rubbish. Rubbish. Will she further agree that nothing discredits our system of justice so much as the widespread notion that some mistakes are too big to own up to? I understand the honourable member may be referring once again to the recent hearing by the Court of Appeal of the case of the Birmingham pub bombings. The Court of Appeal fully examined the defence case and decided that the convictions were sound. The judgment, of course, is fully available to those who wish to read it in detail. You didn't happen to see any West Midlands special branch wandering around earlier, did you? One of their files appears to have got mixed up in my post. Vintage 1975. Shut the door a sec. The organisation was taken over by Michael Hayes and James Gavin. Both men are believed to have been involved in the Birmingham pub bombings. Hayes said he actually placed one of the bomb. What did you say the date was? 75. It's a complete bloody account of the Birmingham IRA, right down to the colour of some guy's van. Well, then was right. What about the six? There's no mention. 
They've known the truth for the last 13 years. I think it's time we chased up a few bombers. As you saw, when the film was made, the six men were still in prison. It took until 1991 for the court system to finally say, whoops, they had the wrong men. Men who had served for 16 years. And it took more than another decade for them to finally get some kind of apology and compensation for all that time in prison. Three detectives were charged with perjury and conspiracy, but their trial was halted in 1993 on the basis of prejudicial news coverage. And finally, the real bombers have never been found. And that's our look at history and history on film. I'm Ann Medina. <laughs>